Hey everybody, this is Gregory from DAP University. So in this video, I'm gonna talk about KYC user registration, all right? And this is something you need to know about if you're building a DAP, a blockchain application, ICO, or using a blockchain in some way in your business, all right? You're gonna to wanna to watch this video. So before we get into that, be sure to subscribe to this channel if you haven't already and click the like button down below. And as always, you can download my courses for free on my website over at dappuniversity.com forward slash free download. All right, so let's talk about KYC user registration system. All right, so KYC stands for Know Your Customer. And this is a requirement for a lot of businesses who use the blockchain in some way, all right? Basically, KYC user registration allows you to verify someone's identity who's using your application and making sure that they're allowed to do uh, certain things in your applications, like give you money, you know, uh, record transactions on the blockchain, stuff like that, right? So there's lots of different ways to implement this. There's lots of different reasons why you might need to use this. I'm gonna talk about all those in this video. But before I do, I also wanna make the disclaimer this is not legal advice. I cannot give you formal legal advice because I'm not a lawyer. So why might you need KYC user registration? All right, well, it always comes down to the legal requirements of where you operate your business and where you serve your customers, right? So you wanna do your due diligence uh, to know whether you need this or not, all right, for your application. If you're building an ICO, you build, have a dApp, you know, you're spending money on the blockchain in some way, um, you know, you're gonna wanna find this out. So what are the most common use cases? Well, ICOs and STOs, that's initial coin offerings or security token offerings. Basically, whenever users want to invest, they have to submit their ID and some information about themselves, and then the business verifies this, and if they you know, want them or are gonna allow them to participate, they whitelist them to participate in the process, okay? And I'll, I'll actually walk you through that step-by-step -step towards the end of this video, so you're gonna wanna stick around, okay? And there's already talk of greater regulation on KYC for using dApps and other blockchain applications. Right. So you want to check on that, see if that's relevant for your business as well. But basically, you know, if you have to have some sort of KYC uh, implementation for your DAP or your blockchain application, there's lots of different ways to do it. You can do it just like the ICOs do it, where you capture identity information and then basically, you know, uh, run through that process and whitelist the person to use your application or not, right? And I know people get freaked out about this because you know of the desire for decentralization. Um, it's on a sliding scale, right? You can do this in a pretty decentralized way. I mean, there are companies who are trying to solve this problem completely where you have like a self-sovereign identity and that becomes you know your KYC system for using any decentralized application, right? And that's sort of the far extreme of complete decentralization. And then there's you know the other uh, extreme, which is just a completely centralized approach where you just submit an ID in a traditional way, and then that sort of becomes your uh, you know, centralized gateway for using a more decentralized uh, tool. And, you know, you might want to find a middle ground somewhere in between, right? You might be able to build some sort of uh, system that does it over IPFS where you have control over it, right? So there's lots of options, but you know, there's lots of ways that you could implement KYC into your own dApps or blockchain applications that aren't necessarily ICOs or STOs. All right, so now I'm gonna walk you through some KYC user registration systems that I actually built that are working in production and kind of talk you through how they work and how you can implement something like this for your own business, okay? So the first one is for a security token offering for a company called ContraCoin that's doing real estate on the blockchain. So you can you know, browse this website if you want to learn more more about this project. But basically you can buy tokens and whenever investors go through this step, they're required to uh, you know, submit their name, email address, Ethereum address, um, you know, their ID documents, and then they'll sign up. And whenever this happens, the business, you know, receives all the information and internally makes a business decision um, about, you know, how that works. Like, do they want this person to participate? And if they do, they get whitelisted to participate in the STO on the blockchain itself, all right? So I'm gonna walk you through another example of this. This is just a demo. And I'm gonna pull up the demo because I don't wanna open up like the back office for a real production project. This is actually just a demo website that I built that I use for my other clients when I give them tours of something where they can actually see real data and not look at other actual customer data. So this is what I'm gonna show you as well. Okay, so this is like an, a demo ICO website at crowdsaledemo.com. And this is a similar workflow. So basically you can you know buy tokens, fill out the same kinds of information, first name, last name, email address. Uh, you basically, you add uh, your Ethereum address, and also your country of residency, citizenship, and you upload your ID documents, okay? Whenever that finishes, you know, you go to this back office area and you see the information about the person who wants to invest, okay? All the information they filled out plus their ID, okay? 
And this is the point where you can take this information and check it with a third party system um, about whether or not you want this person to invest. Like, has this person committed any crimes? Are they on, you know, a terrorist watch list or something like that? There's lots of different things you might want to consider. And like I said, I'm not giving you legal advice. You need to figure that out on your own about what you are required to do and like what your rules are for whitelisting people. But this is simply the tool that allows you to do it, right? And you can also take this the next step further and automate some of this process, right? There are extra third-party integrations where you can, you know, take this information, send it off to a third-party service that uh, does machine learning, basically. And it's going to give you a confidence score on the ID and the person, right? So it's basically going to, you know... Uh, look at the information that's submitted and give you a likelihood about whether this is authentic, right? It's going to help you, like, it's going to help you basically uh, weed out fraud, right? Fake IDs, stuff like that. And you can also check that against databases of other uh, you know, people who have, you know, committed crimes, something like that. And that's one way you can filter through this process really fast and save your team a bunch of time if you've got a really high volume of users, right? So there's lots of different solutions that you can implement for KYC. You can do a very manual approach where you have an admin basically look at every submission that comes through. And then, you know, someone who's a decision maker can make a business decision about whether they're whitelisted or not. Um, you can usually, you know, get pretty far just that way. But you can also take it a step further if you really need to scale and automate a lot of the process and things like that. All right, and in the ICO use case, basically, once this person has been approved, they get whitelisted on the blockchain, like basically with a smart contract that uh, allows a person to purchase tokens in the ICO, okay? There's actually gonna be a smart contract that holds uh, the crowd sale behavior or the pre-sale, whatever it is, right? The ICO itself on the blockchain. And once this person gets whitelisted by, you know, uh, the admin, then they get put in a whitelist on the blockchain that allows them to contribute and purchase tokens. And if they try to do that before they're whitelisted, uh, it won't let them, right? So it's an essential step, it's a two-step process. And that's really common uh, use case whenever you're building ICOs or security token offerings or something like that. You can also do the same kind of approach for any kind of interaction with your smart contracts on the blockchain, all right? All right, so that's all I got for this one. I hope you all liked this video. If you're interested in building a KYC user registration system for your ICO, your security token, offering, um, you know, your blockchain applications, your DAP, whatever it is for your business, you can email me down below with my email address, gregory at dappuniversity.com. All right. And otherwise, you know, thanks for watching this video. Subscribe to the channel. Uh, click the thumbs up button down below. You can always download my courses for free on my website over at dappuniversity.com forward slash free download. All right. Until next time, thanks for watching Dapp University.